All right, good afternoon. I'm Sergeant Kevin Allen, and ho I'm hosting today's media availability with Chief Chuck Lavelle. Thank you for being here. Uh, like I said, we'll start with some comments from the Chief, and he'll take your questions. Uh, today, we'll be using the raise hand feature of Zoom. Uh, if you have not used that before, here's how you do it if you're working on a computer right now. You can find it by clicking on the Participants button on the bottom of your Zoom screen. You'll see a list of uh, all of us on the call uh, appearing on the right side, and the Raise Hand button is at the bottom of that column. I'll call on those who have raised their hand in order. I'll, our call manager will invite you to unmute, and you'll be able to open your microphone and ask your question of the Chief. We do want to address as many questions as possible today and also be fair to everyone on the call. So we ask that each one of you ask one question at a time. Our call manager will again unmute you during, or I'm sorry, our call manager will be muting you during the chief's answer. And that's only so that we can get uh, clean sound for everyone. There's no background noise uh, that's interrupting that sound. Uh, but we do invite you to ask as many follow-ups as you like in the time that we have. Just raise your hand again and we'll circle back to you in order. So with that, I'll step aside and uh, switch the camera here and introduce Chief Chuck Lavelle. Go ahead, Chief. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, I think it probably makes sense to just start out uh, talking a little bit about violent crime, uh, especially given the news today and the council's uh, resolution. Uh, gun violence prevention is some of the most important work we do. Um, we really do it with a focus on the victims. Um, these are real people in the community um, who have suffered from gun violence, uh, families who are hurting because of gun violence. And we want to do our part to play our role as the police in that solution. Um, it's a complex issue and there's room for a lot of different resources and ideas on how to tackle it. And uh, we welcome any resources that are going to help long and short term uh, to address this in our community. We continue to uh, field our enhanced community safety team and our homicide detectives and investigative resources are working hard to, to bend the curve on gun violence in the city. Um, we want to be good partners with the resources that city council and our uh, community based organizations are bringing to bear uh, to help out in gun violence. So I testified today before city council with that message in particular. And um, there's a lot of uh, really great officers out there every day who are working hard uh, to keep the city safe. So I always want to acknowledge them and thank them for their hard work. And then also staffing. Staffing's gotten a lot of attention lately. Uh, I get a lot of questions about that. Uh, we're down to 818 sworn members at present. We have 563 officers and we have 98 vacancies currently. I'm told six more people are gonna resign this month. We have several people who are in background investigations uh, with other agencies uh, who could potentially leave in the short term as well. Uh, next year, we have 88, uh, 88 sworn members will be eligible um, by the middle of next year. Uh, many of them will probably retire and that'll put uh, further pressure on our staffing as well. Uh, the, the tough thing for, for me is we lose a lot of great people, a lot of institutional knowledge, a lot of uh, city knowledge and relationships uh, walk out the door when those people leave, and that's tough. We want to be um, a sought after employer. We want to be able to attract and retain the best people, and uh, that's our goal, and that's a current, uh, a frequent conversation here and across the street and how we could do that. Um, that's uh, very important to us. So. Uh, without further ado, I know there's probably a lot of questions, so we'll, we'll get right to them. Okay, so like I said, if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand, and uh, we'll just call on you guys in order. Uh, Maxine Bernstein has the first question. Uh, go ahead and unmute Maxine and go ahead. Hi, Chief. Thanks for your time. Um, my question is about this new uh, focused intervention team, or I guess it's called FIT. Uh, where are those officers going to come from? There's been, uh, in some of the council proposal, it said it, um, the officers were going to come from domestic violence or sex trafficking, and I wondered how many officers and how is the Bureau going to um, pay for that, for this team? Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks, Max. Uh, we were hoping to get some money um, to pay for that, but that 
doesn't look like it's going to happen. Looks like we'll have to take that out of existing resources. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet where those uh, officers will come from. Um, I think we'll probably look to field a team around the size in a previous proposal of around a dozen officers. And um, we're, we're so lean right now, it's really hard to find a place where there's a dozen officers uh, to pull from. As many people know, we, we moved our traffic division, our narcotics and canine divisions back into patrol to sure up our uh, overtime budget and also uh, to increase our call response times. Um, we don't have a youth services division any longer and uh, we don't have a transit division any longer either. So there, there's not many other places to pull from to create stuff internally. So we'll have to look and see where there are some officers that we can um, uh, pull back to patrol or repurpose to try to fill out this new gun violence effort. But um, we're, we're to the point now staffing wise where, you know, being able to do this means uh, greatly impacting our ability to do something else. Okay, uh, next question is from Jonathan Levinson. Jonathan, go ahead and unmute and ask your question when you're ready. I, Max just uh, just scooped me on my question, which is fitting. And just to follow up to Max's previous question too, you know, all, all the work that's getting done is important work. Um, if, they, if officers come from detectives, there's important work in detectives that, you know, will get impacted. As we shifted our resources from the traffic division, you know, we're a city that, that's had a lot of traffic fatalities in the last year, too. So um, we really need to figure out, you know, the best ways to manage this resource. But eventually, too, there's going to be a, a real a real need to have um, some of this important work done. So that's just part of an ongoing conversation. Okay, thanks, Chief. Uh, Liz Birch has the next question. Liz, go ahead and unmute when you're ready. Hi, Chief. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm in a live truck, so I'm going to kind of yell. Um, gotcha. You said that you want to work in a partnership with these community groups, but with none of this $6 million that was just approved by city commissioners going towards PPB and them asking you to do more work, do you feel like you have the support you need from Portland City Council to properly curb this increase in gun violence? You know, it'll, it'll remain to be seen. Um, I think we will have to um, to figure out how to repurpose these positions to do this work. I, I know the council, I've had conversations with all the council members. I know this is important work to them. Um, they've made their decisions as, as far as funding and allocation of money on their end. And I think for us, it's just really uh, coming to this work. We know this work is important. It's probably some of the most important work we do because it really affects people's lives and safety every day. So we have to uh, we have to figure out a way where we can be effective and playing our part and um, be a good partner. But um, yeah, it, it's, I will say it's very difficult to do um, with limited personnel and limited budget. Okay, uh, next up, Lincoln Graves. Lincoln, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chief, for taking my question. I wanted to ask you about the role that the City Council has laid aside for park rangers in this problem of reducing gun violence. Do you believe that's a, a an appropriate thing to do? And have you heard from park rangers themselves about the kind of work that they may be tasked with? I didn't catch the whole question. Like, and you kind of dropped out there. Could you restate your question, please? Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the role of park rangers in this plan to reduce violence. Do you support that uh, plan? And have you heard from park rangers with the role that they may be tasked with? You know, I, I support resources for gun violence. Um, I think park rangers can uh, be be a resource. Maybe it's probably more of a long term resource um, than anything else. And I think, you know, for us, we'll assist them and, and provide support as far as we can. I know I've heard from a few of them and their stance is that they are not police. They're not there to essentially to play the role of police in the parks. They, they're there to serve more as ambassadors, but I think they could serve as a deterrent. And I think there's, you know, there's room for their participation. Um, so I think for me, I just want to make sure that we as PPB are playing the best, uh, the best partnership role to assist them as possible. 
And I think uh, time will tell how, how effective of a resource they are at curbing gun violence into the future. Okay, uh, next up, Sarah Hurwitz. Sarah, go ahead. Hey, can you hear me? We sure can, go ahead. Sorry, it's kind of loud. Um, so my question had to do with the realigning of some of those resources in this um, new plan. So does that, is this, is this going to add to the enhanced community safety team? Will it be different? Will that enhanced community safety team go away? I'm just trying to understand how it all kind of works together. No, that's a great question. There's a lot of moving parts to this. Um, we, we've put other investigative resources under the detective division to investigate shootings and homicides. So it, it kind of, can look or seem like a big jumble of uh, resources. But I think the community, the enhanced community safety team is probably really more investigatively focused. I think um, this new group will probably be um, really tied into some community oversight and some community interaction. Um, so they'll be separate, but I think it, it's possible that some of their work could overlap and maybe there's a, a need to shift some resources from one to the other. Um, like I said, this is really new, so um, it hasn't really been determined exactly what pieces are going to fit where. But I think it's important for us as the police bureau to make sure we pick the right people to do this work and we give them the right preparation to do this work. Make sure they, uh, you know, they have all their equity training, make sure they have some time to work together before we put them out on the street uh, to do this work, uh, get familiar with working um, as a team, and then uh, you know have some real conversations about what the uh, the community impacts are, and you know talk with community about expectations and how we can best do this work together. Okay, uh, Alex Zelinsky is next in line. Go ahead, Alex. Hi. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Um, you know, some conversations I've had with the mayor's office suggests that some officers may be hesitant to be part of the new gun violence patrol team, the, the focused intervention team, because of kind of the criticism and heightened, you know, awareness of this uh, program and it passed. Is that accurate at all? Is there um, some hesitancy around joining that team? You know, that'd probably be for the individual officers who would be on the team. But I would say this in the in the general sense, uh, this is highly scrutinized, dangerous work. I mean, there is there is probably some good reason to be a little maybe thoughtful about how this work is done, how it's viewed by the community. We've had different um, efforts to to combat this before that were met with scrutiny. And um, there are a lot of great people who did a lot of really good work, got guns off the street, had good relationships with people. And uh, the work was, was criticized um, and it, it essentially went, uh, eventually went away. So, uh, you know, I think people remember that and they're mindful of that. And they wonder like, what would that mean for me in my career if this were to happen again? So, I mean, I, I think it's probably safe to say that some people would be really mindful of how this work uh, could be done and could be perceived, and if it's a, a good fit for them. Okay, uh, Jonathan Levinson is uh, back. Go ahead with your follow-up, Jonathan. Uh, thanks, um, Chief. This was this plan was put together and passed pretty fast. There was no community feedback or input, and it kind of backdoored in these other twelve officers uh, for the the gun violence uh, intervention plan. I know PBB objected to disbanding GBRT and has been trying to bring it back since, but is, is this an effective way to go about it or does it risk adding to the existing divide between the Bureau and the community? You know, for me, I think um, there, there's been a lot of conversation about this. Um, there's been a, a proposal too from the Interface Peace, Peace Action Collaborative also. Um, a lot of different uh, ideas and conversations going back and forth on how best the po police can serve their role in curbing gun violence. Uh, some people feel that's with more officers on the street doing more proactive work. Some people feel that's not with police, it's with other resources. 
Um, so this was really a lot of work in the making. It probably seems today like it happened really quickly, but there was a lot of conversation and thought that went into it. And I see it as different from our gun violence reduction team efforts. This is going to be really community led. It'll have a some type of community steering component to it uh, that will meet and work uh, very closely and figure out, you know, how how we're going to go about this work together with community input. And I think that was something that was missing uh, maybe with our GVRT efforts. I don't think it was um, as transparent to the community. I don't think people had a real sense of how the work was being done, who was doing the work. And I think having this community oversight will lend uh, more community support, more community um, knowledge about how the work's being done and who's doing the work. Great, uh, Maxine Bernstein, uh, you're up again. Go ahead, Max. Thank you. Um, yeah, there was uh, part of the plan I understand is for this community oversight committee to um, sort of set parameters. Do you know how that will be formed or who's in charge of forming that? And is there any sort of timeline for this uh, focused intervention team? Um, and the truth, there was reference in city council to a truth and rec reconciliation effort that would start within the police bureau for six months. Can you talk about that as well? Yeah, I don't have a timeline for the, the uh, community oversight piece. Um, there's some urgency to it. So my hope is it would happen in a you know, in a, in a fairly short amount of time, but I, I'm sure there's going to be a process to pick the right people and figure out, you know, what their charge is going to be going forward and how they'll interact with with our folks. And uh, the truth and reconciliation is something that is in our community engagement plan. Um, it, I think it's an important piece of really charting the way forward for the police bureau. Um, a lot of what I talk about, uh, you'll hear me talk about a lot is trust. And I think really coming back to, to revisit, you know, some, some things from the past, some hurts, and really try to figure out what is the best way to move forward together is important. So I think this truth and reconciliation piece is important to do. And I think internally, there probably is uh, some work for PPB to do before we come to the larger effort of truth and reconciliation. Um, I really think this has to be uh, a citywide effort. I think there's a lot of people in the city and bureaus and uh, entities that could participate and benefit from this effort. But I think it makes sense for for PPB to have some some work up front before we move to the larger group. All right, next in line, Mike Benner. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Chief, thanks for giving us a second. Um, off topic, just uh, a bit here. I think uh, it was the Oregonian that published a, a report about exit interviews um, with officers leaving the Bureau, um, talking about being overworked and um, not a lot of support. Uh, I just want to get your reaction to that when, when you see that, you know, published, but obviously you were probably aware of it before then. Um, doesn't uh, show PPB in a good uh, light. What's your reaction? Yeah, no, you're right. I saw it and it's hard because you, you know, you have really good folks working here and to see them, uh, some of them unhappy and leaving, it's hard. And you know, they take a lot of experience and uh, knowledge and relationships with them. Uh, people have their own reasons, personal reasons for leaving. So uh, I understand those as well. And, um, you know, there, there has been you know, a, a lot asked of the men and women of the police bureau, especially in the last nine, 10 months. Uh, we've had to cancel days off. We've had uh, need to have people come in on overtime. We've had need to staff a full-time crowd control element. And then there's still the regular duties and calls for service that don't go away when those happen. And it's a lot, there's a, a lot asked of the, the folks that work here and it's difficult. So. You know, I talk to a lot of folks who um, who are thinking about leaving or want to leave, um, who I know personally, and you know, they cite a lot of different things. Um, it's not really always just the police bureau in a vacuum. There's other, you know, city type things and environment things and family type things too. We you know we forget uh, a lot of folks have spouses, partners, and 
children and elder parents and other job opportunities that come up for their loved ones too. So um, it's, it's definitely something that we're concerned about. Uh, we're, we're probably averaging four to five people a month leaving and that attrition over time, if you can't hire, becomes, becomes a real worry. Definitely. All right, Lincoln Graves is next in line. Lincoln, go ahead. Just, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Uh, Chief, we have a reporter working on a story about fentanyl drugs, and I just wanted to ask you about sort of that general topic. Have you seen an increase in drugs coming into the Portland area in recent years, you know, drugs laced with fentanyl? And are any of the recent uh, shootings, recent gun violence, can you tie those to this type of drug at all? I don't think I can. You know, that's probably a question better asked to uh, someone in our our narcotics unit. But I think, you know, there is a little bit of worry on my part about overdoses and fentanyl. In particular, I know, you know, with the passing of Measure 110, um, and then on top of that, we have our narcotics unit, which was folded back into patrol. So we have less people available to quickly uh, go do overdose investigations. And that's, you know, that's troubling. But then you introduce a drug like fentanyl, uh, with its deadly characteristics and, you know, those overdoses um, become really worrisome and problematic, especially um, if your ability to investigate them quickly and prevent possible other ones is somehow diminished. Liz Birch is up again. Go ahead, Liz, with your uh, yeah, in, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, in the counter proposal from city commissioners, they made it sound like they only wanted the police department to hire new officers and not rehire retired officers. Obviously, there's a program that you guys can utilize that would allow you to rehire retired police officers. You mentioned losing experience, when you lose these four to five officers a month that are leaving or staff. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's the right direction to go to only hire completely new officers? Or do you think you should have the ability to rehire retired officers? You know, I personally like the idea of being able to hire retired officers. Um, currently, the way it's set up, I think we'd have to make a slight change to it. But the idea early on was to maybe reach back to August and be able to hire, i.e. bring back officers who were already gone um, to, to bolster our numbers. Um, if we did reinstitute the retire rehire program kind of as it's drawn up, it really doesn't really give you any more people. It might let people who are here retire and then come back to work, but it doesn't increase your numbers. Um, and the chief's office here does have um, the discretion to, to choose who gets hired back and who doesn't. So uh, I do like having that, that control of it, but I think it's really one a way to uh, bring people back. If we could go back to uh, like last August and the 120 folks who have gone between uh, July 1 of last year and now, and maybe bring some of them back, that would be helpful. And then, you know, I think ahead to next year, next July of 2022, when we could have 88 folks eligible, uh, if the bulk of those folks choose to go and you don't have a program like Retire Rehire that lets some of them come back, uh, that's a big loss to absorb to an already lean agency. All right, David Ashton, you're up next. Go ahead, David. Go ahead. Yep. It uh, looks like I'm unmuted now. Great. Yep, uh, it cool. seems like the shooting incidents are down by a bit in the last couple of weeks, at least in Outer East Portland, especially in the Lentz and Powellhurst Gilbert neighborhoods. If true, to what do you attribute this reduction, Chief? You know, it's hard to say to pinpoint something uh, for a short period of time like that. Um, I'm happy they're down slightly, but we're still trending for uh, record numbers of shootings this year. And I think that number just kind of ebbs and flows. The start of this year has been something that uh, we haven't seen ever as far as shootings go. So uh, even if it does start to trend down a little bit, that's, you know, that's a good thing for us. But um, I think in comparison to what we've experienced the first three months, um, I, I would hope they would trend down a little bit. 
All right, um, back to Alex Zelensky. Go ahead with your follow up, Alex. Yeah, thanks. Um, one second, sorry. Yeah, my follow up question. Your, your audio fell off there, Alex. Um, are you still there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, you sound fine now. Go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, I just had a question around um, budget. I know that the new FIT plan, um, there is no extra money being uh, given th through council to, to support that right now during this fiscal year. But I'm curious, Chief, if you're planning on asking for any more funding for the upcoming fiscal budget for 21-22, um, and if there's any space to add that on to your current asks. Yeah, we have a, a at ask package in right now for the budget for 5.4 million uh, in an ad back that would allow us to essentially hire about 39 uh, sworn folks to fill those positions. Uh, we're also seeking uh, some funding to add some records, uh, records people and I think some analysts to that package. Uh, there's, there hasn't been an ad to add this uh, fit piece yet and this is this resolution is very new so um, there hasn't been time to really I think ferret that out but we're looking at a, a, about a 10 million dollar budget reduction for the fiscal year at present so we're hoping our ad our ask for the ad back gets approved and we can we can hire I think for for us it's really important that people understand it's a it's a long it's a long haul to hire a police officer there's about six months um, background and processing to actually get hired. And then there's an 18 month probation period on the back end of that. So like in comparison to, you know, some other job where you can hire someone and in a couple of weeks they're there working, uh, you know, for a police officer, it's a long period of time before you are certified off probation and uh, ready to work on your own. All right, uh, we'll probably go about five more minutes. So, um... If you have any last questions, uh, please get in line. Uh, Tess Risky is up next. Go ahead, Tess. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, Chief, I'm wondering if you could please provide um, an update on the investigation um, involving Officer Hunziker, and also um, if it's uh, still correct that he is working a patrol in the North Precinct. Yeah, he is still currently working patrol. Um, that investigation is ongoing. Um, I can't really give a status update to it right now, but um, I will in, in due time once we get some information to actually share. All right. Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Graves was in line next. Uh, Lincoln, did you, did you still have a question or did you? Uh, yes, I did. I had one more question if I could. Okay. Yeah, sorry, please go ahead. Uh, certainly the Bureau has a lot of big things to focus on. We have heard from viewers, though, who they're at least perceiving that small petty crime, like the different kinds of theft, really aren't a priority anymore. Do you agree with that? Is that true? And uh, what would you say to those concerns? No, I'd say that those are important to us. Um, we've shifted a lot of our resources and in investigations towards person crimes, shootings and homicides in particular. Um, we really do realize that, you know, property crimes, I don't even like the term like petty crimes or smaller, because if, if you're the victim, it's a big deal to you. So, you know, we've had to unfortunately shift a lot of our resources away from property crimes and investigations of that nature to person crimes, uh, shootings and homicides. So. Uh, those are important, but right now we're really trying to manage our resource to a point where we can really um, aggressively uh, address those. And, and to some degree, uh, we have less resources to really focus on those property crimes, thefts, and things of that nature. Yeah, and I'll put in a plug for our recent video. We put a video out about the, uh, about the call response times and why some calls do take longer for an officer to respond. So. Uh, we hope people have a chance to view that. Uh, all right, a couple more questions. David Ashton, you're up again. Go ahead, David. 
Yes, Chief. Uh, from the standpoint of law enforcement, uh, what do you consider the results of the Portland Street Response Pilot Program? You know, I, I've heard that they're uh, expanding their area um, outside of uh, outside of Lentz a little bit. Um, I'm really hopeful for that program. I, I, I am a believer that there are some calls that police, you know, shouldn't go to. If there were other resources that are better suited. Um, that those resources should respond. Um, I know we have a lot of interaction with them, um, just feedback back and forth. And I think as they grow and as we see kind of a bigger sample size and figure out what what chunk of those calls they can handle going forward, then I think we'll have a good collaboration. I know the city just hired uh, Mike Myers as the uh, Safe Community Safety Transition Director. So he'll have kind of the overarching uh, umbrella for public safety in the city. And I think uh, if you look at some of the pieces that the Fire Bureau has and uh, Portland Street responses under the Fire Bureau, and then the tools that the Police Bureau has, and then uh, the other public safety partners, BOIC and PBIM, and we'll see kind of where we can all fit in, where there's synergies and where we can kind of function as a, a holistic system uh, towards public safety. All right, uh, and then Max Bernstein, you're back up again. Go ahead, Max. Thank you. I um, There was a reference during the city uh, council meeting about the significant increase in domestic violence. Uh, can you talk about that? And is there a chance that officers investigating domestic violence might be pulled to, to this new focused intervention team? Yeah, like I said earlier, I haven't really figured out for sure where these officers are going to come from. Um, I think the, the reason those two uh, units were mentioned, Human Trafficking and um, Family Services Division, those are a few of the non-patrol based operations branch pieces um, that have detectives in them. So in order or have officers in them. So in order to provide people at the rank of officer who are not answering calls for service, there are very few places uh, you can go and find them. And those two units happen to have officers who do investigations. Um, domestic violence, it's hard to say, but I think, you know, people are one, not out at work or, you know, off doing a lot of things they would normally be doing outside the pandemic. So maybe people are around each other more and there's more opportunity for that uh, interactions to go bad. But, um, you know, I think for us, that's important work. It's hard to say, you know, we're, we're not going to, you know, investigate domestic violence. We have to investigate domestic violence. So it's, you know, it's for us, it's really figuring out how we get the resources to do all the things that we need to do. Because when you look at the scope of work, none of it is unimportant. I mean, there's not people who are, you know, without important work to do or not doing uh, important job somewhere. So figuring out where we can move things without, you know, totally uh, decimating some other piece of work is tricky. And we know when we do move people around, it's going to impact work, but uh, we want to try to mitigate that as much as possible. All right. Uh, with that, I think we will wrap it up. Um, I just want to thank everybody for joining today and uh, just remind you that if you do have any further questions that come up as you're uh, covering your stories, just send us an email to ppbpil at portlandoregon.gov and we'll seek out those answers for you. Yeah. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate Thanks, everybody. It.